Hello, I'm Blaine Reed. I'm the IPM agent for Hells, Wisher, and Floyd County with Texas A&M AgriLife. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to scout for pests in post-tasseled corn. We've got quite a few pests to go over and we're going to base our scouting techniques on uh, some things that uh, Greg Cronholm uh, did years ago and uh, basically forging these techniques uh, scouting for numerous pests southwestern corn borer European corn borer uh, of course we have some other pests to worry about today and we're also living in a world that's uh, post BT so there we can shortcut some of those things but we still need to use those general scouting techniques that Greg used all uh, for so many years so and with the first insects we're going to be looking for are going to be southwestern and European corn borer unlike the days when we had all non BT BT fields, uh, we do we can get fewer plants uh, in a in a field, but we still need to recommend uh, that we get several plants together in a grouping because that's how the insects will lay their eggs. So when we look for southwestern European, we're going to focus in on this area of the plant right here. Uh, in, in this area, uh, these seven or so leaves. That's where the vast majority of southwestern European eggs will be laid. We'll need to start with a zero leaf where the ear is at, and we'll need to scan very carefully the top and the underside of the leaf, looking for these small eggs, well, relatively large eggs, actually, when we're talking insects, they'll be laid uh, like fish scales on the plant. The southwestern corn borer eggs will have uh, red lines that will develop upon them that will get darker as the egg gets older, and the Europeans will have a black dot uh, that will get darker as it gets older. We'll scan each and every leaf, no matter even if that leaf has been through quite a bit of weathering, we're going to need to look at fairly carefully each little strand of damaged leaf. Once you get all the leaves in this area scanned, we're looking to, uh, if we found any, we definitely need to get an age on those eggs or if anything's hatched out, we'll need to look fairly carefully and do some destructive tests uh, behind these sheaths at the base of the ear where these uh, uh, boards will be boring into with in the case of the southwestern down the stalk or in the European here at the base of the ear well they will uh, lodge inside that uh, ear and either later in the season causing the entire plant to lodge where we can't harvest it or the ear to come off uh, and we've, we've got thresholds set for that. The next insect we'll worry about is the western bean cutworm. Now for us here in the Plainview area, that's a fairly new pest, but when we get north of Amarillo, it's an annual pest, and it's a uh, type of Lepidopteran that does come through all but the latest BT, so we need to keep an eye on it, and we are picking up a few moths this far south. So when we look for this insect, we're gonna need to take a step back from the plant and then look up close to this tassel area. We're going to be looking for a mass of either uh, white that will turn purple eggs uh, that will uh, get darker as they get older. They'll hatch out, they'll eat on the pollen, uh, any type of uh, pollen sacs that will fall in this area before they move farther down into the ear where they will get inside that ear and do massive amounts of uh, uh, damage uh, and, and inflict uh, uh, out gaping wounds for fungus and things like that to get started. Now the next insect we have our, uh, our scouts look for are spider mites. This is going to be a secondary pest that uh, if we've had to treat for anything else it's likely to flare as we take out the beneficials. But uh, this is going to be a damage rating system. Hopefully if we scanned these other leaves for the eggs we've made note of the spider mite populations as well. These will probably be banks grass mite but they could be two spotted spider mites. We'll need to look and uh, be sure uh, which pest we are dealing with uh, with our uh, magnifier. Now, if you haven't found any on the upper part of the plant, we need to pull some of these lower leaves and scan them for these mite populations, making special note of the special predators that will eat on the spider mites, such as six-spotted thrips, uh, six-spotted thrips, uh, minute pirate bugs, and mite destroyer beetles. Those will be very key pests. Now, spider mites, uh, we uh, rate their damage on a rating system, a zero to ten scale, with zero being no mites and ten being a plant that's covered up and is likely uh, losing all yield potential uh, from them, literally sucking the life out of the plant. So our action threshold for the spider mites is going to about, be about a 3 to 3.5. Uh, down in the Plainview area with uh, mites that usually attack a little bit later in the season, uh, we might be able to go to a 4, but with something we don't need to let go very far because uh, 
the spider mites will continue to increase and uh, the treatment options that we have available they're extremely uh, predator safe but it's very difficult to get control down the lower leaves so more than likely we'll corral the mites rather than take them out once treatment uh, hits which might take up to 10 days post treatment for it to really become effective in the field. The last few pests we're going to make note of uh, in our uh, data sets are going to be the corn earworm and the fall armyworm. Now the corn earworm or bollworm, sorghum headworm, whatever we want to call it, is a general fruit feeder. They definitely prefer corn. More than likely when we're scanning the leaves we'll pick up quite a few of their eggs. But to get a note of their population, we're going to need to peel this ear back and look for the worms inside which may or may not be there. Usually there will be uh, bollworms in these ears. Uh, they're not generally considered an economic pest here in West Texas. Uh, no matter how many worms will be on this ear, uh, they will resort to a survival of the fittest and uh, eventually only lead to one ear uh, one worm per ear, which will only damage the tip of the ear. Once they're inside, there's not much we can do about it, and we, we kind of live with that light damage. Now, the fall army worms, they're slightly another story. They can get in this uh, ear here and do similar damage to the corn earworm, but they also have tougher jaw parts, and they can move down to this base of the ear doing damage similar to the western bean cutworm. So when we're scouting for the fall army worm, it's very, very difficult in the field. We like to take note of uh, the plant stage, of course. Uh, the moss should be flying and very attractive to the corn in early silk stage, uh, which we'll do all we can to find the eggs, but this is very, very difficult. We'll also take note of uh, moth traps in the area and note for uh, high fall armyworm populations. And uh, oftentimes, if we need to treat, we need to treat these guys before they get into the ear, which would be a uh, spray looking at a non-BT type, uh, type field in that situation for the fall armyworms. Now not all BTs are equal. Uh, a lot of the older BTs or single trait BTs aren't going to be nearly as effective against fall armyworm as some of the, and the western bean cutworm as some of the others have, others have been. We get this post-tassel stage. Some of the simpler or, or single traited BTs, we might start seeing more fall armyworm damage than we'd like to see, in which case we need to uh, talk to seed companies and uh, possibly see about doing uh, making a treatment at that time.